Imagine yourself navigating the perilous Atlantic waters, where a black flag denotes impending disaster, and a menacing man with embers glowing in his beard denotes terror. The most feared pirate of the high seas, Blackbeard, welcomes you to his realm. Join us as we explore the murky waters of Blackbeard's pirate reign, from his infamous exploits to his iconic downfall. Fasten your seatbelts and join us as we explore the mythology surrounding the golden age of piracy by setting sail for that era. The notorious English pirate Blackbeard, whose real name was possibly Edward Teach, but was used as an alias, caused a lot of trouble along the Atlantic and Caribbean coasts for only 15 months. With his long black beard decorated with ribbons, fuses burning under his cap, and a bunch of guns ready to fire, Blackbeard made a picture that was meant to scare his enemies. Blackbeard's story became famous, thanks in large part to Charles Johnson, who may have been a pen name for Daniel Defoe, and wrote many famous stories about the golden age of piracy. His character is shown to be cruel and without any morals, caring nothing for anyone, not even his own staff. Blackbeard was known as a scary pirate who lived and died by the sword until he met his sad end at the hands of the Royal Navy. He had already cut 20 people with his sword and fired five shots. As a sailor, the man who would become known as Blackbeard practiced on the rough seas around Jamaica from 1701 to 1714 during the War of Spanish Succession. He attacked French and Spanish ships. We only know that he was born in Bristol, England and not much else about his early life. Most people think that Edward Teach is just a fake name he used, maybe to hide his shady past. Other possible names are Edward Thatch and Thatch Drummond, but they may all be made up to hide who he really is. Teach worked as a pirate for Benjamin Hornigold in the dreaded Bahamas as early as September 1717. They set up shop on New Providence Island, which was known as a haven for pirates. When Teach and Hornigold were in charge of their own ships, they caused a lot of trouble on the North American and Caribbean shipping lanes. They took the French ship Concord near St. Vincent in November 1717 and stole a lot of valuable things from it. The Concord was a tempting and profitable target because it was full of valuable stones, gold, and other African items. Teach bought the ship after giving it a new name, the Queen Anne's Revenge. Putting 40 guns on the three-masted ship, which had been used for the slave trade before, made it strong enough to fight other naval warships of the time. By early 1718, Teach's pirate group had between 300 and 400 members, and his reputation as a terrible commander had become even stronger. Teach was a towering figure, a beloved leader whose black beard was famously knotted with ribbons. Strict punishment helped keep his lawless employees in check when he was in charge. Teach's depiction of the Jolly Roger, with a skeleton holding an hourglass and a spear aiming at a bleeding heart, was especially horrifying, acting as a stark reminder to everyone that time was running out and that fighting was worthless. His intention in inventing this terrible emblem was to make his victims cower in horror at the prospect of his imminent death. After a series of successful captures, the infamous pirate Blackbeard, real name Edward Teach, sailed to North Carolina and negotiated a deal with Governor Charles Eden to quit being a pirate in exchange for his pardon. The American East Coast officials were either personally involved in piracy or simply considered pirated things to be less expensive than authorized ones. Therefore, Teach's promise was rapidly breached. Attracted by the prospect of stealing from unsuspecting cargo ships, he swiftly returned to his prior methods. The Queen Anne's Revenge, formerly commanded by fellow British pirate Steed Bonnet, was captured by him in March 1718 and carried to the Bay of Honduras. Bonnet was slain the following year. Teach increased his attacks on merchant ships near the American coast after capturing two more, giving him a formidable fleet of four ships. Israel Hands, his second-in-command, commanded the sloop adventure. Teach was able to set even loftier goals with this expansion. He seized eight ships during his daring two-week blockade of Charleston, South Carolina in May 1718. Notably, the ransom included medication that was likely required to cure syphilis in his crew, and he only freed the hostages after receiving payment. Later, while returning to North Carolina via the tight waterways of Beaufort Inlet, Teach stranded the Queen Anne's Revenge and another ship on a sandbank, most likely in an attempt to limit the size of his crew, which had requested a larger share of the spoils. While the Revenge was being handed over to Bonnet, Teach stole the riches and fled on the other ship. The stranded Queen Anne's Revenge eventually sank, but a 1996 discovery of a wreck and a plethora of relics, including an exceptionally large store of cannons, led many to believe she was the ship. 
Governor Eden granted Teach a second pardon after he returned to Bathtown, North Carolina. In addition to keeping his sloop, he was permitted to sell the captured commodities. Teach married the 17-year-old daughter of a local plantation owner before arriving on Ocracoke Island. Nonetheless, his background in piracy was not forgotten. A warrant for his arrest was issued while he was in Philadelphia. Despite this setback, Teach continued his naval efforts, this time capturing two French ships off Bermuda and returning sugar and cocoa to Bath Town. To avoid allegations of piracy, Teach bought the governor and other officials with sugar before using a court ruling to pretend that he had just rescued the cargo from a derelict ship. Virginia Governor Alexander Spotswood differed from his North Carolina counterpart in his commitment to combating piracy. He solicited the assistance of the local nobles and dispatched two Royal Navy sloops on a mission to catch or kill the legendary pirate Blackbeard with a reward of 100 pounds in the pot. While the Navy approached his fortress at Ocracoke Inlet in November 1718, Blackbeard fought them, causing their ships to run aground. Blackbeard put up a brave fight, but Lieutenant Robert Maynard eventually won after a bloody close quarters encounter that required five pistol shots and 20 sword slashes. On January 3rd, 1719, Maynard documented the deed of mounting Blackbeard's head atop his ship as a grim warning in his logbook. So that is all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon on your way out. Till then, see ya.